um, started in 2011, so we're fairly young. And now we're at over, I think, 24 machining centers, 35 employees. You in know. 12 years, you've gotten that far. Everywhere I turn in here, there's another giant machine <laughs> that I'm not familiar with. Look at this. Mitsui Seiki, what is this thing? Yeah. It's next level, like it's, it's yeah, a fully no, yeah, automated it's... machine shop right here. So to give us our tour, we're here with David. David, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, welcome. Now give us a little bit of background on the how you got started here with EMS. Kind of what was your process leading up to this shop right here? Okay, yeah, we um, started in 2011, so we're fairly young. Um, yeah, me and my business partner decided, you know, we were working at different shops and we're like, hey, let's start, let's start a shop. Uh, so it started out with one shot, one machine, um, little Haas machine, and now we're at over, I think, 24 machining centers, 35 employees. Um, so had kind of a rapid growth, um, organic growth. We don't have any investors or um, any outside capital helping us. Let's take a look at what we got going on back here. Sure. Starting out, we have our, our uh, horizontal machining center. Um, so double pallet, um, standard kind of just standard machine. Um, so we have one side tombstone and another side we are, we're actually running a part with a custom fixture. Oh, that's cool. So what kind of part are we looking at here roughly? Aerospace? Aerospace, but um, it's a big steel part so you don't want to fly that on an aircraft. So um, that's mostly for the tooling. Tooling, tooling, for tooling side that of thing, ground support, um, you know, lots of things. Some people don't think about what it takes to actually build some of these spacecraft or aircraft. You guys have a ton of tooling here. Yeah, this is our regrinds. Um, taking a look at you know what what's worth to regrind, what's not, um, and then sending it out. Oh, wow. Now, what kind of stock on tooling? Because, I mean, you have a lot of very consistent tooling here. What kind of stock do you guys keep with a standard ML, you know, with like a half-inch four flute? Are yeah, you keeping um, hundreds on the shelf? What's no, kind of your turnaround um, on those? You know, locally, there's a lot of local stocks. So um, we usually keep like, you know, depending on how, how like, an, like end mills, yeah, like 10, around 10. We have min-max. So, you know, when you have one mil left or two mls left, let's order more. This is our assembly area. Uh, so kind of, we do light assembly here. We don't do a lot of big big assemblies, but, you know, helicoils, key inserts, um, part marking, um, you know, tapping, chasing holes. Um, it's kind of done in this little section. And what kind of standards do you guys, because obviously, you know, when you're getting into aerospace, when you're getting into space flight stuff, you can't just apply and send them apart and hope it's good. What kind of ISO standards are you guys hitting? What kind of measurements do you use for that? Yeah, so um, we're AS9100, so going through you know all the first articles and all the um, in-process inspections um, to meet those requirements to you know meet the customer's needs. Cool, very cool. And what kind of material is that? That's actually aluminum. It's like a it's an anodized. Oh, that's just anodized. Yep. I didn't yep. know if it was Delrin or some no, kind of yeah, plastic. It's, uh, we don't usually see that color, so. No, I haven't seen that color in <laughs> aluminum before. So yeah, getting to the more of the machines. Um, this is our like three axis cell. We do a lot of like dovetail prep for our five axis here. Um, a lot of second op cutting the dovetail off. Yep. So that's kind of what this section's kind of. Good general production machines. Yep. Now, what kind of steered you towards Doosan maybe over some other machines that you were looking at? So um, we used to be all hot shop. So you came in here in 2015, you would see the gray and red all over. Um, so then we, we kind of were having some um, thoughts about, you know, changing over. And, you know, we started out, you know, in 2011, you know, so cost used machines cheaper. So we just wanted to get some newer machines, um, kind of building up to get more into the production and just re reliability. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Wow. We got a lot of machines in this space yeah, here. Yeah, so uh, we're definitely packed in here. <laughs> so as you can see there, we have quick change. So we incorporate quick change throughout our shop. So you can literally take that fixture and pop it on another machine. Um, we've done that where over capacity or it's taking longer, we need to switch machines. So we just pop it on and go. For sure. So, now, keeping track of where those things are and keeping track of the programs and the fixtures, you guys, I mean, we haven't even seen half of the shop yet. You guys have a ton of machines, ton of programs, I imagine. How do you guys keep that straight when you're doing this? I mean, we have ERP system, so um, we run ERP um, and as well as like other systems that we we've, we've kind of developed in house to keep track of, you know, where things are apart, where they are in the process, and and so on and so forth. And so. I take as you've been growing so rapidly getting those things established and getting the organization quick has been fairly critical for yes, definitely. success here. Right, yeah. Oh, I see some manual machines. You guys have a full setup over here. Too. Yeah, so we have some manual machines, uh, mostly for like, 
you know, some post work or some polishing. Um, this is our benching section, deburring. So cool. polished parts, deburr parts, you know, the stuff that we can't hit on the machine. Um, and, and yeah, and then they move on to the next step. And of course, I want to know where this giant machine over here so, is. <laughs> yeah, so this is um, a larger machine, basically three axis. Um, oh, wow. I think we have 86 inches in the X. We just finished up a job that was like, I think six months long. It was running day and night. Oh, really? Um, and they were full long, full long stainless steel 15.5. Uh, part, so. And do you run two shifts, so day and night, or is that more unattended, lights out machine? Um, yeah, that was like, they had a long run time, so a lot of surfacing, a lot of like long operations, so we let it run into the night. Now, who does the programming when you guys are doing stuff like that? Is that the guys who are also running it, or do you have more of a dedicated programming department? No, yeah, we have, um, we have two programmers for mill. Um, they sit on the shop floor with the guys. Um, we found that being a lot more helpful than sticking them in an office somewhere because they need to touch, feel the parts, they need to talk to the machinist. Um, things are moving, like I said, we do a lot of short runs, so they need to have access to the programmers. The programmers need to change programs on the fly. Um, you know, we were out here the other day just on this part over here on this on this machine. I'm like, we need the runtime down, you know? So we got we took 20 minutes off just working together and, and getting the runtime oh, down yeah. on it. So now that machine there, what am I is that a pallet? What do No, so this is an extended tool changer, so I think we oh. have like 200 tools in here. Oh wow. So um, again, we're running a little bit smaller of a part than we typically do. It's a little bit bigger trunnion. Um, so, yeah, again, larger tool changer, quick change tooling. We actually have like five jobs set up on this machine. Oh, no it's not way. a pallet changer machine, but with as many tools as we can have and the quick change tooling, we can have you know a lot of jobs set up at once. And what kind of quick change tooling are you using on there? Um, this is the Jurgens um, quick lock system. Okay. So we use their, their vices and their, their bases. Yeah, no, we were running it in my shop as well, and I said, if you're in a big shop with a lot of changeover, I can really see where it would count, and I guess that's exactly what you're seeing yeah, here. Yeah, no, definitely. We, we definitely invested a lot and are continuing investing it um, as, as, we'll, as we'll move on and see the, the pallet changers. It's oh really critical. So, so Look at this thing. So this is an Akuma. We just brought it online. Wow. Um, five, five axis, uh, pallet pool machine so we're looking forward to get this thing running pretty much lights out um, we want to be able to load this pat this, this uh, machine up with multiple part numbers and keep it running multiple part numbers. yeah so we so like I said we're like a job shop so to utilize the pallet changers a little bit different than like a production shop where right. we can be running a part a short run part during the day um, have it inspected and then run like something that's dialed in at night that's a little bit bigger quantity so that's just Fair running enough. All at night, day shift comes back in, starts, you know, finishes their their their, their short run work, and then it goes back to the production. So. Now, I'm I've seen some of these Okuma pallets, but is this one of those ones where you can actually tell which pallet uses which program? Oh yeah. So it will automatically yeah. call up. You yep. don't need to say we're going to run ten of one program. You right. can say pallet one is program X, program uh, pallet two is program Y, and it will just go do it. Yep. Ugh. Yeah. It's next level, like it's it's yeah, a fully no, yeah, automated it's, machine shop right here. Yep. And it's crazy, absolutely crazy. Uh, look at this, Mitsui Seiki. I actually am not very familiar with these machines, so, but yeah. this is interesting. So these are actually very high precision machines. Um, it's they're, they're out of Japan. Um, they make limited quantities um, and they almost like essentially build them by hand. They hand scrape the ways. Oh, wow. um, the accuracies are um, insanely good and they last forever. Like. Um, you know, I joke with people that, you know, in like 1990, it looks exactly the same. <laughs> you couldn't even but, tell. Yeah, but I mean, they upgrade the, you know, the newer technology in, in terms of like um, the, the controls and all that stuff. So, so this is a five axis horizontal machine. So it's like a trunnion machine, but it's up 90 degrees. So That's interesting, um, which is really helpful with chip evacuation when we're, we're doing these, some of these big hog outs. Oh, for and sure. That chips just fall right out. And when you're doing aerospace stuff, you're taking a block like this that weighs 100 pounds. And you're making it weigh five yep. and about or the same size. Sometimes. So it's <laughs> yeah, you're right. A ton of evacuation. Yeah, so it, that helps a lot. Um, it's a really cool, fun machine. And how so. did you get interested in Mitsui Seiki? Because I mean, I, I I'm not saying I know a lot about the industry, but I see a lot. And it's a brand that I've heard of, but you could tell, you could ask me, do they make lathes, mills, <laughs> additive? I couldn't tell you. Yeah, How so, did you get familiar with them? Um, we actually got familiar with one of our friends. Um, they had one, or I don't know, my business partner was talking to him. We got it kind of equated, and then one of our, our uh, 
like machine companies that sells SU machine. They're like, hey, we have these two machines. Are you guys interested? We're like, oh, Mitsui Siki kind of got the conversation going. They were down in Long Beach and you know, I had to get rid of them, so we ended up getting them for a good price. And um, I see you have tons. Oh, this is for that machine. Yeah, That's so this, a this tombstone pa pallet pool. This pallet pool is a tombstone pallet pool. Oh, wow. um, right now, we have about like 20 part numbers um, dedicated to this machine, um, and we want to grow that. It's interesting when you see tombstones, people usually think you can only run or you should run you know, four sides of the same part to get runtime. You actually have different fixtures, it looks like, on just about every side of yep. these tombstones. So you get <laughs> set up one, set up two, set up three, that's yeah. really, really interesting. And so depending on the like the, the rate, um, depending on some of the parts, you know, well, it only takes like three days to run, but we're gonna run another set in a month. So if we have a side on the tombstone that's open, you Might know, as well. just keep the setup, and then when the parts come back, throw them on and keep on going. Jeez. More Doosons, that's a, oh, you had another pallet pool. You yeah, guys so are this really is leaning a, into this automation, uh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, so really it's, uh, the pallet pools, you know, I think everyone's starting to get into them more and more. Um, it's just definitely the way to go. Parts ready to go when that when that thing is uh, when the um, machine is done, it'll switch the pallets uh, and continue on its way. And then the pro the operator will come by, see that it needs to be changed, tell it the pallets ready, and so there's never there's never lost time where no. I can have an operator here. I can have an operator on this machine, but actually working across the shop. So it's insane. And this is running right now, and that's another five axis with the trunnion style. Wow, that's crazy. Everywhere I turn in here, there's another giant machine <laughs> that I'm not familiar with. Yeah, what so, is this? So this is Navarmia. Um, so they're very big in Europe or bigger in Europe. Um, they serve more of the customized market where you go to like DMG and you're like, I want to build this machine. They're gonna be like, yeah, right. You know, so they will build anything that you want. Or Look at this. almost is that anything that you can massive. imagine. But this is their, you know, this is a, just one of their standard machines, but um, five Jeez. axes, but they can build it with four of those turntables, three spindles, as tall as this roof, as long as this building. Oh, so you've um, got flat table with vices. You got a fourth axis, and is that a five? Well, essentially for this, that's yeah, a five right, axis front right. So the B head moves. Wow! Look at that thing. What kind of controller is that? Right? Um, Heiden Hein. Oh, it is Heiden Hein. Okay. Heiden Hein. So um, I mean, you're familiar at least with the controller. Are there any weird considerations that you maybe? didn't think of with buying a European machine that, I mean, I, I've never even heard of these guys. So. No, yeah, I mean, everything's pretty like, I mean, they all use a lot of the same internal parts as far as the spindles and all the, you know, stuff they use to build the machine. So it's mostly available, newer machines, so we haven't had to really help or really had to, you know, work on the machine yet. So we're gonna be getting another one. It's always busy because it has the larger, a little bit larger area for the five axis because we're always quoting right up to that limit. Now, what is this thing? So, oh, it's um, a giant mill. Yeah, so it's just a big mill, gantry mill, um, wow. five axis. So we do a lot of like aluminum panels for um, the aerospace industry, structures, panels. What, it's CMS, I, I'm not familiar with these guys at all. Most of their machines are like routers that do like more composites and like, like more plastics and composites and stuff. So we really only run aluminum on this machine. Um, sometimes we even rough parts out on other machines and just because the horsepower and the, it's not really built to be like a really um, like aggressively cutting machine. A machine like this that takes up so much real estate and has so much versatility is an expensive addition no matter how you cut it. Right. What kind of let you know that this was gonna be able to be utilized most of the time or at least be a worthwhile investment? I'm um, just working with our customers and knowing what their need is right so you know when you see a lot of quotes that are like man these are really good you know parts i would love to make them but i don't have a machine so it's kind of talking with them you're like hey if we get a machine yeah you get to quote it you know as long as you're competitive um so learning all that and, and getting into that so and yeah, has this thing paid really... for itself yet well, i think so yeah i mean I, I think we uh i think it's booked like for i think a, a good six to nine months no so, way yeah okay so you're laughing yeah. you're great so it's you know, you always want companies to reinvest in what they're doing. Wow, that thing's nuts. I can see why you guys have so many chip pins out there now <laughs> when I see the size of this. Yep, thing. they fill up quick. Oh, you guys have a Swiss too. Yes, so we have two Swiss machines. Um, this oh. one's in the middle of a setup. Um, yeah, this one's 20 millimeters, so we do like smaller pins. Again, a lot of aerospace. Yeah, um, aerospace fitting, so like Generally, you don't want to run like short runs of them. <laughs> right. Setups take a while, but once they're running, they hum for oh. days on end. Extreme precision, extreme production. Yep. Beautiful. Absolutely crazy. 
and even these material racks. Yeah, this I've been to a lot of shops. This is a very organized material <laughs> rack. We try to because, you know, we have sometimes we deal with like a lot of more expensive materials like ink canals and stuff. So just a little chunk of material is like, you know, 2000 sure. bucks. So you want to know where it is. It yes. doesn't want to go in the scrap bin by accident. Yeah, no, definitely. Find someone supporting one of their tables with a chunk of that. You'll be upset. So we got more machines on the backside. Yeah, so turning um, department. So we have five um, turn centers. Two of them have mill turn. Beautiful. Um, and the others are just These regular are nice little machines. Now with the footprint you guys have here, this is a very economical use of space. You've done really well with that. If you had a plan to add more to this uh, location, obviously you can expand and so on. What would you be adding? More mills, more lathes, more Swiss kind of, where is the focus right now? We're kind of in the mode of we've had so much growth that we're just leaning out and we're just getting better at what we're doing. Yep. Um, and then after we get through that, we'll be uh, maybe looking at expansion. Um, our thoughts maybe might be moving our turning to a separate building and expanding nice. turning and then we have room for mills. Right. So um, that would be kind of like the next big jump. And how many people, you have 35, how many people here work kind of at a time? Is it all 35 every day or is it kind yeah, of staggered Yeah, so we have out? a few people at night, like our second shift, but most of the action happens, you know, from six to four. Fair enough. So we're, <laughs> we're back to where we started, back to inspections. Because yeah. when you're doing aerospace, it's really nice to be able to make parts accurately. Unfortunately, they don't care unless they come with inspection reports. Oh yes. Let's see this. So we have our, our inspection department, um, temperature controlled. Wow. Uh, we have multiple CMMs. Um, Giants. Look at the size of this thing. Now, do you have people that just work here full-time in QA? Oh yes, definitely. So we have three full-time inspectors. Wow. Something that people don't consider, you know, it's nice to get the work, but you also need to be able to hire and attract talent and train talent that can make sure your parts are correct. Otherwise, all this is for nothing. Yes, right. <laughs> There's lots nuts. of different um, things that, you know, growing a shop and learning how to run a shop is, you know, you learn it and you have to know what, um, you know, how to hire people and get, get the right people in here to do the right job. And if people want to find out more about your company, where can they go? Um, our website, um, ems-mfg.com. Or online, of course, on Instagram. I know you guys are active there as well. Yep. Thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming by.